support of uh, SMEs in the Philippines. So um, we look forward to the presentation of uh, Mr. Uh, Crispian, and uh, perhaps he will give us the private sector perspective on uh, single-use plastic. So uh, please allow. Thank you, Dr. Um, yep. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we we will not only provide you with a private sector perspective, but what private sector intends to do in the short, medium, and long term um, to address the challenges that we have on single use and not only plastic, but all packaging applications. Huh? Um, that's why we, we, we call the program uh, Zero Waste to Nature. Uh, just a brief introduction of PARMS. Who are we? Um, PARMS is the Philippine Alliance for Recycling and Material Sustainability. We have with us uh, corporate members, industry groups, retail groups, MERFs, junk shops, consolidators, civil society and academe, and government. The whole concept and idea of PARMS is that we should come together, let's work together. Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, companies and even uh, different groups have separate initiatives. Now, if we can bring all of these initiatives and um, try to look into the objective of developing and implementing a holistic and comprehensive program to resource recovery, to increase recycling, to reduce our dependence on landfills. Huh? We adopted a concept called Zero Waste Recycling Program. And this was also adopted by the National Solid Waste Management Commission. Um, and the whole concept is it has to have a component of education. We need to inform and educate. We need to recover. We need to collect. We need technical assessment of these materials. Treat the material. Recycle the material. And the most important is market development. A lot of programs have failed because you miss one component. You know, if you can recover the material, if you segregate from storage, then somebody collects it and puts it in the same truck, you get frustrated, right? And sometimes that even if there's a separate collection, you look at disposal facilities, it goes to the same landfill. So it's also, these are some of the challenges that we are facing and that we need to address. Sometimes you can produce products, but these products cannot be sold, so that's a separate challenge. I'd like to touch um, very quickly on RA9003 on non-environmentally acceptable products, given that this discussion is on single use. Um, the law mandates that within one year, um, may up a list of non-environmentally acceptable products should, be, should have been defined. No? But the law also provides that the alternatives should be within 10% of cost. It provides exemptions. And there is a ruling that there is a criteria. You can't just ban a product from the commission's point of view without undergoing a set of criteria that includes life cycle uh, assessment and economic analysis, among others. So you have, um, and this is not easy. I, I'm sure that the science community understands this. Huh? What are the alternatives now for single use? Um, would those alternatives be economically viable? because we also have an economy to look after. Um, the Commission also created a technical working group as early as 2009 to evaluate, evaluate some of these products. And one of the criteria is on plastics. And this is the structure of uh, the technical working group that's dealing with plastics. And the Commission has um, um, put single-use plastic as one of the categories that is undergoing study right now, and DOSD is leading this study. So I'll shift from my government hat to my private sector hat now. Um, the Philippine Alliance for Recycling just yesterday launched an ambitious program we call Zero Waste to Nature. Uh, the initial title that we had was Zero Plastic Waste to Nature, but some sectors told us, why only plastics? Deal with everything. So again, we come forward and we decided yes let's deal with everything because what uh, the whole idea is that we need to prevent generation of waste and to be honest this is not just about single use plastic if we remove single use plastic from the system there will still be single use applications that would need 
to find a home somewhere that would need to be disposed of in a landscape in a country where disposal, as presented by Nika earlier, is still lacking. So let's try to address everything. And um, how, uh, what is the approach? How are we going to do it? We believe that plastic waste along with other waste should not end up in nature. Okay, that's our principal slogan. Um, we need to help, uh, okay, work together with all stakeholders um, in looking for solutions, in looking for viable solutions. We need to be guided by the principles, global principles of three R's, um, uh, sustainable material management, and um, life cycle assessment, and circular economy. We have a four R's approach, and when I was looking at the presentation of uh, Dr. David earlier, this is very similar. You have five, we have four, but um, our redesign is part of the reduced waste generation concept. Um, we need to, uh, okay, first is packaging redesign. Okay, we need to try to work together so that the packaging or the products that we end up in the market will not end up as waste. We need increased R&D for this. We need to design for recycling and consider the end-of-life situation in local conditions. And we need to reduce packaging waste as a whole. Uh, we want to improve recyclability and increase the use of recycled products. Um, use more of recycled materials for products and packaging. Okay. Uh, we, we, we are looking at voluntary phase withdrawal of non-recyclable products and packaging where environmentally sound and economically viable alternatives exist. So, madali kasi magtanggal tayo sa market. If you can tell me what the substitute for a particular product that fits this criteria, we can easily remove it out of the market. Yeah. Even with the commission, if that those alternative materials are there already, uh, I think the law also understands that there is economic implications. If you simply ban one product, shift everything to another that costs a lot more. Uh, so, and, and um, even EU, um, um, the earlier presentation uh, <coughs> uh, mentioned that you are also looking at EU. EU did not ban it overnight. You see, the announcement of the EU bans on balloon sticks, straws, um, stirrers, cutleries that they don't actually use. They eat in sandwiches, right? So all these bans had a phase-out period of at least three years. Announcement was made in 2018, and it will be implemented only in 2021 by the EU regulation. So, um, and, and the, the unfortunate part of it is that a lot of local government um, regulations and even the drafts is an abrupt stop to all these materials. We, and alternatives has not been spelled out yet. Even the definitions has not been spelled out yet. We want to look at reuse options, okay, explore alternative delivery systems and reusable materials while ensuring the protection of environment, health, water, water resources and economy. So we are looking at increased consumer awareness for reuse um, and policies to shift behavior. We're looking to explore and develop refill systems for delivery of goods uh, to consumers and address regulatory restrictions. Okay, as much as uh, industry wants to do it, there are regulatory restrictions, especially for food and personal care. And we need to shift reusable options when, while ensuring that water and wastewater resources are not affected. You see, we, uh, we, we hear in the news that we are expecting a water shortage this summer, huh? the same way we did last month. Just imagine if we shift all consumption of all fast food chains tomorrow to go for reusable. Imagine how that would impact the water. And more importantly, okay, wastewater. That is a separate challenge and a bigger challenge to us also. You know? um, um, again, I would rather put our water for irrigation so that we can have more food to eat in this country rather than just to wash the dishes. So how, um, and this perhaps we have to look at different approaches. Um, recover. Um, we need to increase waste collection across communities. We need to involve all stakeholders. We need to create added value from waste so that there will be more items to recover. And doing so 
Okay, and we need to more importantly develop an infrastructure to systematically recover waste from source where there is better quality. You know, if you're collecting it from mixed sources, it's highly contaminated, right? But it has to be systematic, you know? I love the models of Mother Earth where they collect it from households, okay? Those, those are ideal con conditions. Now, can we do it nationwide? The problem also with recyclable material, whether it's paper, plastic, glass, or steel, is it is a commodity item. When prices are high, everybody wants it. When prices are low, the junk shops run away and close shop. Okay? These are some of the things that we also need to look into and address. Right? Sometimes we design products that are recyclable, but may not be recyclable in local conditions. Okay? Uh, glass, for example, is not recyclable in Boracay and Batanes. Why? Because the transport cost is very high. These are some of the things we need to look at and we need to see how to address these problems. Um, if we can do this, and if we can do this together, we increase income potential of those who pick waste. We increase the income potential for junk shops and across the whole chain, and we get that valuable product, we divert that valuable product away from waste. And once we are able to get it, we have to ensure that the facilities are in place to recycle these materials. Uh, we need to have an increase in demand and applications for recycled materials, establish that linkage between the packaging industry and the recycling industry. Okay, right now it doesn't match, and they don't talk to each other. If you look at the recycling, um, uh, recycled materials produced in this country, it has not yet met the requirements of the pa consumer goods packaging industry. Okay, we need to, you know, uh, match them together. Um, we need high-end applications for recycled materials. Um, Coca-Cola announced a bottle-to-bottle -bottle project, and I hope and I'm sure that with working together, this time it won't be a failure. Remember, we have the first bottle-to-bottle -bottle facility for PET in Asia. It's in Pampanga, it ended up as a white elephant. Why? Huh? I think this time, we have to ensure that the market is there. Uh, one more thing, if we're to put up a facility, we also have to ensure that the material is still there. If local government units will continue to ban single use and include a highly recyclable PET material, um, the, the investment might fail. So have this consideration. I was talking to Boracay. Boracay banned all single-use beverage bottles, including water bottles. And we said that a lot of people do not understand that recycling is anchored on high-value material. If you take out PET, from the recycling system, or at least reduce the PET volume, there is a potential that for these islands, nobody's gonna take everything. Because a lot of people want the high value, and they will take, they're willing to take all the rest together. If you reduce volumes of recyclables, you have to watch out for that potential that you also remove the recycling infrastructure especially when we have 7,600 islands in this country. And we need to strengthen investments, no? Um, okay, we need to push for incentives or provide incentives to companies, especially those who go for environmental compliance. There are companies that comply environmentally. Now, what kind of incentives can we give them so that they become more competitive? Um, and if we are able to put up more recycling facilities, that means more jobs that helps the economy of the Philippines. Now, we share this responsibility with all stakeholders um, and the citizens of our country. Um, in line with this, we, we intend to develop and implement a roadmap. Short term, 2022, medium term, 2025, and long term, 2030. Again, we have done the declaration yesterday in line with the Manila Bay uh, anniversary celebration and this is Zero Waste Month, timing then, and also the anniversary of IRA 9003. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank the DENR for giving us the opportunity to be able to launch it in their event yesterday. Um, we intend to 
develop, okay, uh, to have the consultation by February and March, we will have the consultations on, road, uh, on developing the roadmap. We will present and launch the preliminary report. I was asked by the NR, back in 2013, when will that report come out? So because it takes time to develop a roadmap. It takes time to get stakeholders together. Now, uh, I was, um, I'm happy that when we released this declaration, we got all stakeholders, at a minimum of 11 FMCG companies to commit to us, recyclers, consolidators. We've got all, uh, all of them in. We have the academic community with us. I'll take this opportunity to invite NASD to be with us in the development of the roadmap. Um, and, and hopefully, um, and, and let's say uh, what we want to happen is that we will submit that preliminary report by April because that is what DNR asked us to do. So sabi nila, submit the roadmap by April. Sabi ko, napakahirap naman gumawa ng roadmap in two months. Di ba? Uh, pwede namin kung puro magic motherhood. Now, what we want to do is not motherhood statements. It's concrete actions, programs on what to do, how to do it. Things that we can not address, we will park it. And this will not be only for plastics. This will also be for paper and all other materials. And, as, and we, all, we are also appealing to government to allow a reasonable phase-out period in collaboration. We are hoping that when we develop the roadmap, in fact, it was mentioned earlier also, the lack of information, the lack of understanding, the lack of what alternatives are available. We are hoping that this roadmap will address all of that. And we want this to be presented to government so that the, uh, the government is guided with the right policies. So with that, uh, I think that's my last slide. I'd like to thank you very much. And uh, take this opportunity also to uh, invite all of you. Yeah? Um, to be honest, we com I committed as farms to develop this roadmap to take on this task. Unfortunately, wala pa ako kaming budget. I'm working on the budget right now. Pero with or without Tulito, uh, we're going to do it and we hope that we can do it with all of you. Thank you very much.